finding your comfortable seat, whatever that is for you. Let those eyes fall closed and start to pull your awareness inward. So letting go of whatever you were doing before you sat down on your mat, forgetting about anything that you might need to do later. For this next hour, it's just us, just here and just now. Let the shoulders soften down away from the ears, the shoulder blades slide down the back. Imagine that little thread connected to the crown of the head, setting you up just a little bit taller than usual. Then notice your breath. Not to control it, but notice what your baseline is. How are you arriving to your practice today? Then start to soften through the rib cage and let the diaphragm drop. Now, if, you, if when your diaphragm dropped, you sat forward a little bit, press yourself back, get your spine back in alignment. Good. Now for this next minute or so, we're just gonna breathe. If the mind starts to wander, bring it back to the sensation of your breath. Double checking from time to time that the belly is soft, rising on the inhales, lowering on the exhales. And taking the biggest, deepest breath of the day, filling the whole chest space, the whole belly space. Then through the mouth with a sigh, exhale completely. <sighs> and inhale the arms, out and up. Bringing the palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Inhaling out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Last time, inhaling out and up. This time when the palms come to touch, interlace those fingers, flip the palms, press the ceiling away. Big inhale. Exhale, tip right. Inhale, center. Exhale, tip left. Inhale, center. Dropping the right arm down. Exhale, take your time. Now think about gluing that left sit bone to the ground. Soften through that whole left side body. And engage the core. Inhale back to center. Exhale left. Keeping that right sit bone glued to the ground. Active reach with those fingers. And engage the core, inhaling back to center. And exhale, float those arms down. Twist time. Uh, you can take your basic twist just like that. Joanne, give that a try in Baddha Konasana. See if that works today. We'll just see how it goes, right? Uh, if you want to go for a deeper twist, you can point the left knee forward, step the right foot across. Either way, the right hand's going to go behind. Then either the left hand to the right knee or the left arm to that right thigh. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, twist with the belly first. Then the ribs, the shoulders, and finally the gaze. Thinking about growing taller with each inhale and then twisting just a little bit deeper with each exhale.
and big inhale. Exhale, return that gaze to center, followed by the rest of the body. Switch those knees or just switch those hands. Left hand goes behind, right arm to that right thigh or right hand to that uh, left knee. Inhale, sit tall and exhale, twist belly first. Then the ribs, the shoulders, and finally the gaze. And big inhale, exhale, return that gaze to center, followed by the rest of the body. So we're headed for our tabletop, roll over the knees if it works, otherwise kick those feet out to the side, that's fine too. Take a big inhale when you get there, then exhale, sit back to your child's pose. Bring those hips to the heels, resting that forehead on the floor. Now think about letting all of your joints settle into place here. Let as many of those muscles relax as you can. Maybe even take a moment and scan through your body. Notice where you're unconsciously holding tension. Try and let that go. And inhale, shift forward, tabletop. Cat pose, exhale, press the ground away, tuck the tailbone, gaze drops to the navel, really pulling that spine up towards the, uh, pulling the core up towards the spine, rather. Cow pose, inhale, let the belly drop, the tailbone lift, the gaze gently lift. Swinging the torso to the right. Up into cat pose, exhale. Swing it left, down into cow pose, inhale, keep the circle moving, soften through the hips, soften through the shoulders, find all the tight and sore spots. Now notice the apex of your arch as it goes around. Try to make it hit a different spot each time. Maybe target between the shoulder blades, the mid back, the low back. And switching directions when you're ready. All right, returning that spine to neutral. Find those hands right under the shoulders, those knees right under the hips. Extending through those right fingers, pressing back through that left heel, bird dog pose. Find the strength in the core, the strength in that back body. Beautiful, big inhale. Knee to elbow exhale, squeeze it in, lift the core. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale, squeeze it tight. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. We're gonna do just one more, inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. This time pull it in as tight as you can. We're gonna hold it for 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale long and set it down. Exhale. Good job. That was a long time. Extending with those left fingers, pressing back through that right heel, bird dog pose, finding that core strength.
and big inhale. Knee to elbow, exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale, slow with control. Inhale long, all right, last one. Knee to elbow, exhale. This time pull it in tight. We're gonna hold it for 10, nine. Dome that belly up towards the spine. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale long and set it down, exhale. Okay, we're gonna do a different stretch this morning. Usually we'll go back to child's pose, but today keep the uh, legs, the thigh bones straight up and down, and then walk your hands forward, dropping your chest to the mat. This is Anahastasana uh, puppy pose. Now you should feel a pretty good stretch through the upper back, through the chest. Think about bringing your armpits towards the mat. All right, using those hands, using those fingers, gently press yourself back to child's pose. You can keep the head low. All right, now walking the hands to the right, keep that head low. We're gonna get a nice stretch through that left side rib cage. You might even feel it through that left armpit. Gently walking back to center, then all the way left. Gently walking yourself back to center. All right, now reaching those hands way out front, spread those fingers, plant those palms, tuck the toes under, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Now take a moment, pedal out those heels, maybe shift the hips from side to side. Try to find some space in the upper back. Really press the ground away, lengthen the spine. Noticing your alignment, thinking about getting those hips in line with the shoulders, in line with the wrists, all one straight line. All right, looking between the hands, we're gonna step that right foot forward. Stay up on those back toes. We're gonna inhale up to lunge. All right, now notice that front knee. If the knee is kinda caving in, engage through the outer thigh, pull it out. You want it to be in line with your hip. If it's falling inside of the hip, then it's gonna put some uh, torque on the knee and eventually you'll wear, wear your knee out that way. So make sure it's nice and in line with the hip. 
Beautiful. Notice your low back. If you have kind of a sway back going on, engage through the core, maybe even slightly tuck the tailbone. Awesome. Find that breath, keeping it nice and long and smooth. Now, if those fingers are getting tingly, feel free to bring them to heart center. That means that you're pinching something in your shoulders and it's not, not a good thing to push through. Uh-huh, good. Strong through the core. Beautiful, all right. We're gonna bring those fingers to the ground. We're gonna set the left knee down, top of the left foot down. Now notice the, we're not straight up and down on the knee. This leg is stretched out behind, right? All right, now that front knee, you wanna have it right over the ankle or a little bit behind, not in front of. Uh-huh, good. Now bringing that right arm to that right thigh, inhaling that left arm high. Now this may be it. This, this may be plenty, right? Or maybe, maybe you don't even make it all the way up. Maybe you need a block. That's okay too, right? If you're here and you feel like you can uh, give some more, bring that right hand up to meet. And if you want to add a little bit of a back bend, totally optional, do what you can. Don't hurt yourself, right? If anything hurts, it's not yoga. Back away from it. Think about letting those hips soften forward and down. Major stretch through that left hip flexor. Good job. Bringing those hands down to the mat. Shifting the hips back, popping up those front toes, Ardha Hanumanasana half split. And it's okay if you're here. You can be fully lifted and still get a great stretch. So if you have blocks handy, they can be really helpful. Or if you can keep your balance up there, it's a good balance challenge too. But if you can, work in the direction of bringing that forehead towards the shin. Wow, good job, guys. Nettie and Lisa, you're, you both look great. I want you to think about bringing the crown of your head towards your foot now. Awesome, awesome. All right, shifting the weight forward onto the bottom of that foot, then bringing both hands inside of that right knee. We're gonna settle into lizard lunge. Now, if you wanna use blocks here, you can. <laughs> Barbara, uh, you can stay lifted the whole time if you want to, that's totally okay, uh, right? Up here, this counts, it's good. If you can, lower it down. And usually it's better to be a little bit more lifted than you need. That way you can flex yourself into your end range. You don't want to start at your end range, then you're going to potentially hurt yourself. Were you asking about the knee, Joanne? Yep. Um, it's, o it's okay for the knee to be, to be pointing out a little bit, uh, but, but you do want to keep the knee above the ankle. Does that make sense? And you wanna make sure that the foot is pointing the same direction as the knee. So if the knee is out of it, then the foot should be out of it too. Cool.
All right. Bringing those fingers to the mat, gently press yourself up. Tucking those left toes under, lifting the left knee, stepping the front foot back to a chaturanga. Nice, straight, strong plank body. Bend those elbows to the rib cage. Shift forward, press the ground away, inhale, up dog or cobra. Lifting the hips up and back, exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a couple of breaths here. Let yourself sink into that upper back stretch, that shoulder stretch. All right, looking between the hands, stepping that left foot forward, staying up on those back toes, inhaling up to your lunge. Good, now check yourself out once you get up there, notice that left knee, this is pretty important. And if, if you notice that your knee is falling in often, just make sure that you check it each time. You're gonna have to train your brain to, to watch for it. So if that left knee is falling in, press it out, keep it in line with the hip. Notice the low back. If it's giving you that sway back, engage through the core, maybe a slight tuck of the tailbone. Good. Notice your breath, keeping it nice and deep and smooth. All right, bringing those fingers to the ground. Set that right knee down, top of that right foot down, maybe even stretch that right leg back a little bit farther if you can. Make sure that ankle is below the knee or a little bit in front. Then bring that left arm to that left thigh, good. Inhale those right fingers high. And then if you want to, bring those left fingers to meet. Melting those hips forward and down. This is all about that right hip flexor. It should be a pretty major stretch, but not pain. Adding a back bend if you want to. Now, if you are adding that back bend, whenever you go into a back bend, think about first lengthening the spine. Uh huh. Beautiful. All right. Bringing those fingers to the mat, shifting the hips back, popping up those front toes, Ardha Hanumanasana. Good. Awesome, Lisa Netty, think about bringing the crown of your head towards your foot. Oh yeah.
Beautifully done, guys. Shifting the weight back onto the bottom of that front foot, bringing both of those hands inside of that knee. Then use blocks, stay lifted if you want, or lower down. And you can always lower down onto blocks too if you're kind of in that in-between space. You can bring your foot out a little bit. The foot. Uh-huh. It's just so that the knee stays on top of the ankle. Good job, guys. Bring those hands to the mat. Gently press yourself up. Tuck those right toes under. Lift that right knee. Stepping that left foot back as you chaturanga. Nice, stiff plank body. Strong arms. Shift forward. Press the ground away. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Lifting the hips up and back. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right. Go ahead and let the knees drop to the mat for a second and just comfortably sit up. I want to talk about uh, ujjayi breath. So I've, ta I've talked about this with some of you, um, but I'm not sure that, I've, that I have with all of you. So ujjayi breath is a uh, breath control technique that people use throughout their uh, yoga class. In this uh, little bit coming up, we're going to do sun stretches, but I want us to, to do them while we're using our ujjayi breath. Feels, it feels a lot different, really. It really connects you to your breath. So, ujjayi breath. Uh, some people call it Darth Vader breath or ocean sounding breath, right? And um, the best way to explain it, I think, is if you imagine your hand was a mirror and you wanted to fog the mirror up, you would go, <sighs> right? So that, that slight restriction in the glottis, that makes that <sighs> sound. So you want to have that on the inhale and the exhale and with the mouth closed. So it's going to be through the nose. And the sound is coming from the glottis. Now, it might be really uh, subtle, but hopefully you can feel it. If you can't hear it, hopefully you can feel it. Um, does everybody kind of have a sense of, of their ujjayi breath? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Uh, so let's head back to your down dog. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> and looking between the hands, walk those feet forward. Inhale to a halfway lift. And exhale to a forward fold. We'll take a moment in this forward fold stretch. Now make sure that the bend is coming from the hips here, not from a rounding of the spine. A good way to make sure that the uh, pelvis is tilting in the right direction is to think about keeping the heart lifted and the tailbone lifted as you come down. That'll force that pelvis into the correct position. Good. Now ragdoll pose if you like it. Bring those elbows in the hands, a gentle rock from side to side. Let that neck go. If you're holding tension in the neck, let it drop. Beautiful. All right. 
Put a little bend in those knees, engage the core. Think in reverse, swan dive, inhale, rise. All right, now go ahead and just exhale those arms down, stay standing. I wanna take a second for you to tap into your ujjayi breath. So, so take a moment, check out your breath, nice and long, smooth. Try to maintain the same tone through the whole breath if you can. All right, I think we're ready. Sun stretches, ujjayi breath on. Inhaling the arms up. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. And inhale, rise. Keep that connection to your breath going. I want you to continue on your own. Go for it, your, your own speed, your own breath. Take it away. Think of this as a moving meditation. Keep that breath connection. Let the breath be the primary aspect, the movement secondary. Beautiful, we're gonna keep going for a little bit longer. Beautiful, all right, next time you get to the top, stay there. All right, and just exhale those arms down. How did that feel? Did that feel pretty cool? Did you all kind of achieve that moving meditation sensation, I hope? Yeah, maybe, 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 okay. All right, bring those feet mat width apart. Bring those hands to the hips. Now think about lifting the tailbone, lifting the heart, big inhale, and exhale, tip forward. Now all of this needs to be coming from the pelvis. When the spine starts to round, you've hit your limit. So right there is where you stop and bring your hands to your thighs or your shins or to the floor or to a set of blocks. Respect your, your edges, right? If your body says stay there, you should listen. Now notice your breath here. Feel free to keep that ujjayi breath turned on for the duration of the practice. It really makes it um, much more of a meditative experience. All right, planting that right hand down just below the nose. Then we're gonna inhale that left shoulder on top of the right, opening that left arm. Yep, totally okay to keep the arm down if that's what the shoulder wants. Mm -hmm. 
Notice that breath, keeping it nice and long and smooth. Nice long spine here. Good. Beautiful, big inhale. Exhale, sweep those left fingers down. Inhale that right shoulder on top of the left, opening that arm. And big inhale, exhale, sweep those right fingers down. We're gonna take another moment in this forward fold. You might find that you have more uh, stretch available now. For some folks, bringing the forearms to the ground is a good goal. Yep, maybe the crown of the head. All right, bringing those thumbs to touch, then hopping or walking those feet into your yogi squat. Awesome, all right. So if the heels aren't coming down, I, I think I see almost all the heels down. This is awesome. If the heels aren't really coming down, take the knees wide. You, the feet and the knees, take them wide. Usually that'll do the trick. Lisa, are your, your heels are way up, yeah? You can even take your back to a wall if you want to, and that'll give you the stability so that you can lean your weight back into the hips or back into the heels. Now, if it, feels, if it feels terrible, don't feel like you have to stay there. <laughs> but if it's working, go for it. All right, now you're welcome to stay just right here. Totally fine. If you wanna add a twist to it, plant that right hand in front of that right foot. Then inhale those left fingers high. Think about reaching to the ceiling. I usually point at it and extend my arm as far as I can. Feeling that length happening in the spine. Beautiful, big inhale, exhale, sweep those left fingers down, plant the left palm in front of that left foot, inhaling the right fingers high, reach for the ceiling, lengthen that spine. Beautiful, big inhale, exhale, sweep those fingers down, all right, option for crow pose here, if you wanna try crow pose. <laughs> uh, easiest way I know of is to bring the knees closer together, get them right into the armpits, plant the hands down, then come up on those toes, chaturanga the arms, keeping those elbows magnetized towards each other. And then bring those big toes to touch. Now, if you, yep, awesome, Gail, yeah, um, so, if crow pose has been a little bit out of, out of reach, or if you're just learning it, or if you're you know, just at the edge, using blocks can make all of the difference in the world. If you stand on your blocks, then your feet are already halfway to where they need to go to lift into your crow pose. So just plant the hands, lift the butt, 
and bend those elbows. You don't need to bend them much and those toes are gonna be ready to lift. Now also I have the support now. If I'm falling back, I can just touch my toes to the blocks. So I feel a bit more secure, right? It's just a little lift. <laughs> awesome, Gail. <laughs> Magnetize those elbows. Yeah. <laughs> they were off for a second, Nettie. It was a second. I saw that. <laughs> uh, you might try the blocks. I, do you have blocks at home? No blocks? Okay. Yep. Manuel, have you been in your crow pose for like the last five minutes? <laughs> All right. Go ahead and have a seat. Swing those legs out front. Spread those toes wide. Grab a drink if you'd like one. Making some knuckles with those toes. Dome the arches of the feet. Spread those toes wide. Pull them back. Trying to see daylight through each of those little piggies. Another round of knuckles, dome those arches. And relax those feet, bring them in Baddha Konasana. Nettie, if you wanna try that after class, you can use just books too, if you have some, some big books. Okay, now it's important that your pelvis is tilting forward here, check in with it. If it's not, use a blanket or a block, put it under the edge of your butt, and that'll make your pelvis tilt forward. Wow, there it went. So notice the sensation if you're actually tilting forward or not. It makes a big difference. Good. All right. Now, if everything's feeling fine, inhale, lift the heart, and exhale. Start to walk yourself forward. I like to use my hands with a bit of traction on the mat to actually pull myself forward. Down happens all by itself. Hey, Gail, when you were in your yogi squat and you needed to come out of it, was it because of your ankles? Here, actually, I'll, let, me, let me unmute you. Hold, hold on. I did a lot of yard work yesterday, so my muscles oh. are a little... <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't your ankles. Oh. I miss yard work. <laughs> Since I moved here, I don't have a yard, and I used to love it. I had fruit trees and a big garden, and oh, I just loved it. All right, bring those fingers to the mat. Gently press yourself up. Extend those feet about a foot or so until you have a square or a diamond shape here. Then either from above or below, wrap those hands around the feet, and then lower yourself down. Now, if you're inclined to pull with the arms here, it's okay if you pull a little bit, but only if your spine is in that cow-type position. When your spine is in that cow-type position, all of that force is transferred through the muscles, and then it ends up uh, expressing itself in the pelvis tilting forward. If you have a cat-type spine and you pull, all of that pressure is gonna go to your lower back, and that's where herniated discs and things like that happen. So if you wanna pull, Make sure you have that cow-type uh, cow spine. Otherwise, just soften into place.
Beautiful. Bring those fingers to the mat. Gently press yourself up. Extend those legs. Roll out those sockets. Ah. We're in the final stretch. There's just 15 minutes left, and I know at least 10 of that is going to be on our back relaxing. So you have arrived. Good job. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's do our supine pigeon. So let's go ahead and lie back and extend the legs up like we're going into legs up pose. Then we're gonna cross that left shin over that right thigh, put a bend in that right knee and then squeeze it in. So that left leg is, is in the same shape as you would take pigeon on the floor. Beautiful, and it should be a strong stretch, but not a pinch or pain. If you have a pinch, feel free to extend the legs, roll out the hip sockets, and then try and go back in. And gently extending those legs, bending that right knee, bringing that right shin over that left thigh, bending the left knee, squeezing it all in. So if you have a lot of flexibility in this range and maybe you're having a hard time getting a good stretch, you can bring the bottom of the right foot in, into the uh, el left elbow crease or even onto the left bicep, then, then bend that left arm in, then reach that right arm all the way out around that right knee, and then either interlace the fingers or you know grab wrists if you have that much space and you're gonna get uh, a tighter, an easier, tighter squeeze that way. Hmm. All right, gently extend those legs. Bring the feet down to the mat, mat width apart. We're just gonna windshield wiper the knees for a second. And if you have a block handy, grab it. Uh-huh, awesome. All right, legs up pose. Use that block, put it right under the hips. Find that sweet spot where those legs stay there all by themselves, or almost all by themselves. <sighs> and maybe take a couple of big deep breaths. Start to let all of the tension go. Let go of any breath control. Let your face relax.
All right, letting those knees fall towards the chest, removing that block with as little effort as possible. If it's easier to bring the feet down first, go ahead. Then give those knees a big squeeze, a big inhale, and exhale, let them fall right, keeping the left shoulder down if it'll stay there. Maybe you wanna bring the right hand on top of that left knee just to assist in your twist. Softening through the core. Gently bring those knees back to center. Give them another squeeze, big inhale. Exhale, let them fall left, keeping the right shoulder down. If it'll stay, maybe the left hand comes to the top of that right knee. and gently bring those knees back to center. Now, if there are any last movements that your body wants here, take it. Could be anything. Windshield wipers, maybe child's pose. Or a happy baby pose, rather, is what I meant. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome, all right. Bringing those knees in for a big squeeze. One last big inhale. And exhale into Shavasana. Take a moment, make yourself perfectly comfortable, whatever that takes. Grab a pillow, grab a blanket, turn off the lights, close the blinds. Yes, grab your eye pillow if you have one. Then relaxing the forehead. Relaxing the eyebrows. All of the little muscles around the eyes, relax them, let them go. Softening the cheeks, letting them melt down towards the ears. Relaxing the jaw. Letting the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. With each exhale, feeling your body pressing heavier and heavier into your mat. With each exhale, falling deeper and deeper into relaxation. For these next few moments, just relax.
Now starting to bring your awareness back into your body, maybe wiggling some fingers, maybe wiggling some toes, maybe reaching the arms overhead for a big full body stretch. When you're ready, rolling onto whichever side is the most comfortable for you, savoring these last few moments of relaxation. Then using as little effort as possible, gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat, keeping the eyes closed or lowered. Now take a moment to feel into the body, notice what's changed. For me, I always have this vibrating buzz after a yoga class that feels fantastic. Maybe you feel that. And inhaling the arms, out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Inhaling out and up. See yourself grabbing your big hand full of divine energy. Exhale, pull it down to heart center. Feel that warmth. See the glow. Last time, inhaling out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down to the third eye for the mind, to heart center for the body and spirit. Namaste. Ah, good job, you guys. I'm gonna unmute all the microphones just in case anybody wants to talk. I think I am. There we go. Everybody but Lisa. Lisa, yours didn't unmute for some reason. Anyway, thank you all for being here. Um, if you feel like more class tonight, I think you're all on unlimited passes, so you're welcome to come to, you know, all three classes daily if you want to. But uh, tonight's, <laughs> tonight's class is the uh, fire and ice class, and the, the fire part might be a little bit more than you want, uh, but the ice part uh, is some really nice, deep, long stretching, and by the end of it, we're so stretched out and feeling feeling fine, you might want to join. So see you tonight if you want to. Otherwise, have a wonderful weekend and see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.